Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're going to take a look at some functions this time, just as examples. And we're going to go through four different examples and then we're going to combine them into one function at the end that has multiple return values. And these functions should be familiar to you and if you're an experienced Python programmer and you're watching this video, you're probably wondering why I'm doing this the hard way. And in truth, a lot of these functions can be much more easily done than how I'm going to do them, but I'm just going to use the tools that we've seen up to this point in the series. Okay, so if you find a better way to do it, you can leave it in the comments, that's awesome. But in this, in this video, I'm just going to show you the way based on the tools that we've already looked at. Okay, so what we're going to do is mean, median, mode, and range which are just different ways of measuring numbers. Mean is average, median is middle, mode is the most often, and range is the difference between the largest and smallest. Okay, so this is a, they're not hard concepts to understand mathematically, and they're actually not too hard to code. Uh, to do them though, we're gonna need a list of numbers, and I'm gonna make a simple list to start, and then we're gonna do these, these functions here. Okay, so let's start with mean. Uh, mean is going to take in our list. And now I can call this list whatever I want. They don't have to have the same name. Just to prove my point, I'm going to call this sample data. Uh, and in the mean function, uh, this list variable will be equal to whatever we pass into it, which in our case will be this sample data. So let's go ahead and figure out what mean is. Well, mean is all the numbers added together divided by how many numbers there are. So we actually know a way already of adding all the numbers together, and that's sum. And we also know a way of counting all the numbers, which is length. So in our case, sum is going to give us 30, and length is going to give us 5. And 30 divided by 5 is equal to 6, which is the answer for the mean of this set of data. So what I need to do is divide and return. And that's about it. So I'm going to say mean. I'm making this look nice here. Oops, I don't know what I put in print there. String mean uh, sample data. And then I'll run this. And we get 6.0. And we can change our list. No matter what we change our list to, we're going to get a new mean out of it. Okay, so 256 and so on. So, so it's giving us a floating point number which is pretty cool. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and do the next one. So mean is super easy. Uh, the next one that is pretty easy is range. Uh, range, we can't actually use the real name of range because that's used with for loops, but we can use RNGE. And we're gonna pass in list again. And range is the biggest number minus the smallest number. And in this case, 10 and 0 are what we want. So 10 minus 0 is going to give us 10. And we could find that two ways. The hard way is by going through the list using a loop and then finding the highest and lowest numbers. The easy way is to take the list we have and use the sort function. And when I use the sort function, so let me call range down here with my sample data. If I use the sort function, sort method really, it's going to sort our list. And now I have the biggest number here and the smallest number here. So all I have to do is just return the biggest number, which is at index 4. So I do list length of, um, length of list minus 1. Because remember, uh, length is going to return five for five elements in here, but I want the indexes, not the element, so uh, or element count, so I have to subtract one, and then I am going to subtract uh, zero from that. So why don't I just put four here? Well, if I change the size of my sample data, I want my function to work with that. So if I run this, and now I'm gonna print this out, I get 10, which is correct. And if I put another number in here, like 100, 
I'd get 100. Or if I made this equal to, I don't know, 430, that means the biggest is 430 and the smallest is 9. So I get 425. So at the moment, everything seems to be working just fine. I'm going to go back to this data because it's a little easier to look at. Let's do the next one. So the next one is median. And median is more complicated because we have two possible ways of getting the median. We still need to sort our list, but if the list is even, meaning if it has an even number of elements, we're gonna do something different than if it has an odd number of elements. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll do the even numbers first. I'm gonna put one more element in here. And I'm gonna print out the list here for us to see. Oh, I need to call median. Okay, so there's our list. And we want these two indexes. So in our case, we want index two and index three. So how do I get index two and index three? Well, index three is pretty easy to get. It's just gonna be the length of the list divided by two. And the index for the other one then, if this is three, it's just gonna be length of the list divided by two minus one. Now if I run this, you notice I get 3.0 and 2.0. So that's my, my, two, uh, my two indexes that I wanted. So let me print this out here so we can see it. Uh, we have index three and index two. So when we find the median, we have to take these two numbers because they're technically kind of both in the middle and we add them together and divide it by two. So how do I know if my list is an even numbered list or an odd numbered list? If it's an even numbered list, it will be mod two will be equal to zero. So if length of the list mod two is equal to zero, that means it's an even list. So if it's an even list, then I gotta do this. Take my list, I take the first index here and put it in here. And I actually have to, I do have to make it an integer, not a floating point, because you can't use a floating point number as an index in a list. There's, even though this is three, it's right now, the type of variable is a floating point, and Python will complain saying, hey, you're using a floating point number as an index. And even though it knows it's three, it, it still says it's a floating point, when a floating point could be 3.2 or 3.5, and that makes no sense as far as an index goes. Okay, so this is my first one. And I'm gonna add this to my next one. So I'm actually gonna take this here. I'm gonna cut, copy it. And then I'm gonna divide this all by two. All right. I'm gonna leave that print line there for right now. And I'm gonna pretty that up over there a little bit. And I'm gonna run this. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and print this out and see if it's working. Print median string done. Median is six. And um, we have a small mistake in there. I forgot to put over here minus one. Now we have 5.5. .5. So that's good. Five and six, you add them together, you divide, you get 5.5. .5. So in this case, our median works. And if we had another even number one, something like this, the two middle numbers would be six and nine, those get added together and you get 7.5. But we don't have anything for odd numbers. So let's go back to our original list that we had. Um, which is going to be, I was going to show you down here, but I'm just put it up here, I suppose. Taking like this. Okay. Um, in this case, zero, not our median, because we have to sort it. Our in our case, six is actually going to be our median. So we need to figure out this index. And we should already know it because we've done both of these and it's going to be pretty similar. So 
otherwise, if it's not even, that means it's odd, meaning if the list doesn't have an even number of elements, it has an odd number of elements. So I will return list int length of list divided by 2. So will that work? Well, if the length of the list is 5 and I divide by 2, I get 2.5. But integer will always round down. So if we're rounding down, then this will work. So let's check it out. Median is 6. So it looks pretty good to me. We got 6 there. So now our median function is working. So we've got mean, range, and median. And each time we're getting a little more complicated. So now let's do mode. Mode is probably the most difficult of these and we're only going to worry if there's a single mode we're not going to do something like bimodal in case you know what I mean when I say bimodal uh, we're just going to worry about one mode so to do this we're going to loop through the list and we're going to count each of the elements in the list so I'm going to go say for I in um, actually we can just say uh, for num in list okay and I can say uh, list dot count okay uh, num so I'll show you what this is doing here okay so this is going to uh, let's let me comment this out so right now mode sample data Right now, I'm just going to print out my numbers, da, 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 and the list is at this point already sorted because I've been sorting it up in here. So at the moment, the list is already sorted. Uh, so don't worry about it being sorted or not. But I need to count them now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use list count, and list count returns the number of times that that number was found in the list. So, oops, let's go ahead and get that back. You notice now I have one, 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 one. That's because each, for each number, and so if I say number, let's, let's print this out so you can see it nice and neatly here. Okay, and string, done. So I'm counting each one of these. Uh, if I put another 10 in here, you're gonna see that for it prints out 10 twice because it says, hey, it looks at this 10, then it looks at this 10, and it says there's two of each of those. Okay, and if I put a five here, you're gonna see that it does the same thing, five, two, and two. And that's because the list is already counted. Okay, so, um, or sorted rather. So we want to use this ability to count in order to count which one has the most. All right, so we're gonna say uh, mode number, and what I'm gonna do is actually say the mode number is equal to the first element of my list. And I'm gonna say mode count is equal to one. Okay, so obviously if I, ha if I take the first number off the list, at the moment there's one of those numbers. All right, so what I'm gonna do is each time I go through, I'm gonna check if the number I'm looking at has a count that is bigger than the current mode count. Okay, so I'm gonna say, actually I changed this to mode count max. So I'm gonna say if, okay, list.count number is greater than mode count max. So that means if the number I'm currently looking at is bigger than the the then one at this point okay then we'll do something okay. all right so then i'm gonna say uh then mode num is equal to num and mode count max is equal to list dot count num all right and when we're done with that if mode count max is still equal to one, then return, okay, 
no mode. Actually, we'll return null. Okay, so null means no mode. Otherwise, it, then the mode count max is bigger than one, we're gonna return actually two numbers in this case. We're gonna return, uh, return mode num and mode uh, count max. So we're gonna return the number and we'll return the count. Actually, let's just return the number for now and then we'll return the, the count later. Okay, so let's see if this, this works here. Whoops, null, return null. Oh, sorry, not null, none. Sorry, I'm thinking of a different language. Sorry for that, none, not null. Okay, so in this case, we need to print this out. Mode plus string run none because there's no mode in my list, right? But what happens if I put a nine here? Then I get a nine. And if I put 10, 10, 10, I get 10. All right, so it looks like our mode is working. But what happens if I have two numbers that have the same amount in here? Well, in this case, it's actually gonna take the first one that it comes to, which will be the smallest because our list is already sorted. All right, so there is uh, four functions for you. We've got, this one is the most complicated and I highly recommend you go back and look at what I'm doing in here to get the answer. All right, so take a look at this. Try to understand the, the logic I'm using, why I'm setting this to one and why this mode, uh, I'm setting this mode number to the first one, mostly because I need something to initialize it to. Uh, take a look at none, it's not null. Null and none kind of mean the same thing. Uh, you'll see null in other languages and none in Python. All right, now we can do one final thing. Uh, we can actually put all of these inside one function and return it. So I could do data analysis and it takes a list. And what it's gonna do is it's going to return mean of list mode, say mean median of list mode of list and range rng e of list. Then I can call this one function to do all my sample data information. So I can just do data analysis sample data print. Okay. And it returns my mean, median, mode, and range all at the same time for me. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Uh, so in this, we have examples of four different functions that all take a list parameter or list argument and return uh, single values, either always in the form of a, either an integer or a floating point number. And then I created this last function to wrap all of those other functions together and return one list of sample data, okay? Our sample data analysis. All right, so this is, uh, I know this video is probably probably quite difficult for, for some of you that if you haven't um, been following along exactly with all the videos, if you're just looking at some examples of functions, some of this might not be too easy. But I recommend going through, trying to build this on your own, figuring out uh, what I did, maybe trying to break things down and make it more simple. This code is not optimal. It's not the best code. It can be fixed a lot. So go back, check it out, play with it, and just try to learn something. Okay, if you have questions, leave them in the comments on YouTube or on the website. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.